Hello YouTube, my name is Jimmy Reyes, comic book illustrator, located here in Texas, so I guess I should say hello y'all tube. This is a uh, short video I'm going to make inking with a 102 curl coil over um, pencils provided by Dave Finch from uh, an issue of Batman. So this is printed on blue line. Uh, the reason so is that um, once scan it in in Photoshop, I can remove the blue lined image, and all that remains is my line art in black, which is my inks, the line work that I'm putting down with the with the ink and with the nib and and brush. So I will be using um, brush a little here and there throughout this image. The reason I chose Quo Quill is the angular lines that Dave does around his figures and uh, I feel much more confident creating those angle you know really sharp angled lines with a Hunt 102 uh, Crow Quill. The ink that I'm using is Coronor Universal Ink. Um, it's waterproof so it will stain so you got to be careful with it. Um, it's made for both paper and film so it, it allows it to dry fairly quickly so that I can uh, work you know, at, at a pretty steady pace. Um, and the ink's pretty thin, pretty fluid, so it flows off my nib fairly well, as long as I keep cleaning my, my nib throughout um, the time that I'm inking and not allowing too much ink to um, dry on the, on the steel part of the nib on the tip, then it, that would block the ink flow. Sometimes you get, um, fibers from the from the paper sur um, surface and uh, the nib scissors like this and it allows ink to flow sometimes paper gets stuck in between there and it keeps it open and you get more ink flowing out of your nib than you intend um, I have a standard uh, nib holder that I use um, and so the uh, purple thing that you see on the end of my nib is a grip, a phone grip, that I got off the internet that I ordered. And the reason for that is that it um, helps my grip um, because I will be inking for many hours at a time. And this helps keep my wrist and fingers from fatigue are from cramping up. So this here is um, my first video. So I am learning as I go. And um, so I apologize if I get a little quiet throughout the video. Um, we'll try to remember to talk out loud to myself here think out loud and kind of tell you what I'm thinking as I'm as I'm going right now um, my nib is giving me pretty good clean lines so I am trying to find little areas that are requiring the um, control of the line so that way while the nib feels pretty good I can I can do that the thing about nibs you never know what you're gonna get when um, when you open a nib you know even straight out of the box sometimes the nibs aren't sometimes they aren't you know gonna work unless you get a bad nib even though it's brand new because they are machined so they uh, quality sometimes is lacking and I apologize for my my dog back there got a got a German Shepherd really great guard dog
and uh, even when the neighbors get home, my dog gives me a heads up anytime anyone's near the yard, so she's <laughs> she got a big bark. All right, so I, I rotate my page a lot as I'm working, mostly because I, I do feel com comfortable throwing my line in a certain direction. Um, and I do throw my line most of the time towards my body. Because um, I'm used to, I like this motion with my arm, but I can throw my line away from my body, and that's usually only when I need a longer line. If I don't need to throw a line that long, then I won't. I'll throw it towards my body. So I rotate the artwork a lot, and I, I look around, and I, I try to absorb and, and uh, keep in mind what the penciler has done on here. Um, and I, I do pull my head up a lot to look at the artwork from a distance, just to kind of get a new perspective and to make sure that I'm staying true to the pencils, but at the same time, enhancing what the artist has done put down because inking is not just tracing over the line it's also translating from grayscale to black and white line art it's adding texture depth clarity to the image So one or two nib, um, though it's described as being flexible, it's not literally flexible where you really want to put too much pressure down on the nib. You, you do have to have a pretty light hand on it. It's not flexible in the way that if you if you're familiar with brush, it's not flexible in that way. You can get many different types of line from your nib um, so that may be why it's described as flexible but um, it is a still tip nib so it it really flexible in the, in the meaning that it doesn't really bend this way but it it opens and allows you to um, vary your line um, width and um, since it has a really fine tip, you can sculpt your lines. You can create a straight, thin little line and stop that line and then move the nib over and continue that line. And it looks just like one continuous line like you didn't actually stop in the, in the motion creating that line. So it's a, it's a great tool um, allowing you to uh, really sculpt a lot of different little shapes out of the line. You know, there there is a lot of different little things that you can do with it. So I I like it. Um, it's become my main tool, but not my only tool. I do um, work with a brush, uh, and I do work with two several different size nibs, which this image does not have panel borders but I do ink my panel borders with a, um, a B6 nib which has a different holder for it but um, I like that much more than any tech pen or any type of pigma pen or um, whatever the other tech pens are I draw a blank because I, I really don't use tech pens I use nib for everything even for a lot of the technical stuff um, I have a nib and a straight edge but if the image requires me to use a tech pen I will because I want to put down the best line work that I can 
and to put the type of line that the image requires. So um, you want to have a, a large arsenal. Yeah. So if you are comfortable with a brush, that's great. You know, um, you can do a lot of work with a brush, but I'd say, you know, learn the nib as well because y you never know. I mean, that way you can accept a lot more work from various art artists, you know, in different styles. Um, and if you're a nib, primarily nib, well, learn the brush as well because same, same thing. So Dave's work is pretty organic, um, and I like that. You don't have to sit there with a the straight edge, creating all these perfect little straight lines. But even though the lines are just a, a bit more angular and stuff, you do want to have a certain amount of control over it, not but still giving it that real sketchy kind of look. Kind of like a organized chaos, I guess. And this is just my opinion of um, what I think looks best over his artwork. He has been fortunate enough to work with many talented um, inkers. Um, and um, so it's a bit, you know, um, intimidating to ink his work. You know, this is a portfolio piece for me. But even so, you know, people are going to look at it and they expect the quality, um, a certain caliber that, you know, has been placed over Dave's work throughout the many years that he's been working in the industry. So they, it's a, it's, a, it's a little challenging, but I'm always up for the challenge because I want to be Jimmy Reyes and not be Scott Williams, although I really appreciate his work and uh, if it wasn't for his work, I, I don't think, I don't know, I mean, I may not have gotten inspired enough to ink. Um, you know, guys, you know, like Rudy Nebra and stuff, they're all the inkers whose work I look at and Sandra Hope and stuff like that. They're, I mean, you know, people that, you know, great inkers, Joe Weems, you know, um, Danny Meeky, a lot of guys that I just, I really study their, their line work. And they've all done a wonderful job over Dave's work and I think man well you know what can I bring to this image to this artwork and not trying to change up Dave's work at all but just trying to put a slight slight little twist that has my signature you know not focus so much on the individuality, you know, or standing out, but I am focused on the quality, make sure I'm doing quality work. But in the back of my mind, I'm, I'm keeping in there thinking, you know, okay, you know, what goes on Dave's work that I think looks best, you know? Um, maybe something a previous inker didn't do or has done a little differently. But right now, I'm working on portfolio pieces, so everything that I'm going to put in my portfolio has to be my best work. And hopefully, 
soon you'll start to see my work in printed pages again. Um, I used to ink back in 2007. I got to ink a number of books. But at that time I was only able to work part time in comic books. So as you can see, I rotate the page a lot. I've got a baby food jar that's off camera over here. And that I, no, I'm not eating baby food, but <laughs> I empty out what's in there and then wash it out and fill it with warm water. And I can dip my brush and nib in there and I use an old pair of jeans, well, what really, I mean a pair of jeans that I, I went out and bought at a thrift store. The pair of jeans were only 50 cents. So I didn't feel bad cutting them up. Um, and I use the jean to clean my, the inside of my nib just to keep anything from clogging the nib or from blocking it so that the ink can flow smoothly, smoother and more ease than my ink flows from the nib uh, ink well, the much easier it is for me to put a line down. So here's that little angular thing Dave does right here. You can see on his pencils, he, you know, he angled it uh, instead of just making it around on the cape, on the fold. So, sculpting your lines, you know, when you throw a line, you don't necessarily have to do it all in one, I mean, you throw it in one motion, and, some, and the, sometimes you throw it pretty quick, and it creates that smoother, thinner line, but it may not come out perfect in the first try, and it's okay to go back and, and touch it up and sculpt it, smooth out some of the edges, whatever it takes to get that quality look. And of course, um, you know, you've got deadlines and stuff like that, so you can't spend, you know, 45 minutes on one line trying to sculpt it up. But, um, you know, at the same time, you don't have to worry about, it doesn't have to be perfect. You know, just the best line you can, you can get. Um, because you don't want the illustration to look stiff. You don't want it to look like it was created by a computer. You want it to be hand-drawn. Because there's something about that, it's kind of sketchy kind of look that, that has, that retains the um, energy that you see from the pencils. So you don't want your inks necessarily to be super clean, every line perfect. Because in my opinion, it loses energy. Then again, I mean, you know, also I don't leave, you know, extremely messy line work. I mean, I do try to find a medium in there somewhere so that it's a little you know sketch look but it's still organized and clean with the cocoa and how I use it is that I don't put too much ink I don't dip the, the nib too deep in there because then your lines come out thicker you get more, the more ink you put on, the more ink will flow out. The less, you know, if you just find the right medium balance in there, um, 
you know, get some pretty good line work. Um, it, it's not too thick because you can always build up your line. It's harder to take away from your line. Sometimes if you don't put enough ink down, you'll, your nib won't have any ink flowing from it and the metal tip will dig into the surface of your Bristol board, digging up some of its fibers and get caught into your nib. So my phone that I'm using to record this, um, for some reason it's not letting me make really large videos. So I am going to do it in parts. Um, so what I did here was I built up the black. From the black there are bleeds that, that come out. And I'm gonna wait for this to dry and then I'm gonna throw my bleeds like I did, like this. Um, and throw those lines out from that. But you know, I don't have necessarily have to wait for, uh, I mean, I don't necessarily have to do it all at one time. So some of these bleeds that you see here, there's meaning behind them. There's reason why Dave threw it. I chose to use these bleeds. They're not just rendering for the sake of rendering. It's used to uh, create shape in the pants here. It's also used for shadow effect. So the the closer the lines get together, the darker the area will look. And the thicker the lines are, the closer together, the darker it will look. And um, then you start thinning out the line, spacing the lines a little further apart, and it creates a little gradient effect. So it's darker, closer together, up here, thinner, further apart as it comes down. And that creates the, a gradient because a penciler can, you know, use their pencil, lighten up on the pressure, and they can create a, a, a gradual, you know, gray effect. And inkers were working in solid black and white, so in order to, to create that and to translate that to line art, you've got to use, like, bleeds, cross-hatching, you create these little gradients and stuff. So that's the reason why, I mean, uh, the penciler has chosen to draw it that way, because he's thinking ahead, he knows, he's worked with inkers, and he knows, okay, this is going to be translated into black and white, and this is how he wants to um, create the rendering, you know, so it's it's kind of there as a map for the inker, and you don't have to follow exact lines that he places down, because um, they're kind of, they're on a deadline too, and they're going at it, but he'll place it down there and say, hey, this is where you create the textures or shapes, and I want these lines there, and then, you know, I can go in organize them, um, create them almost like a, like a pattern. Um, you know, you don't want to just kind of throw lines and have them anywhere, you know. You want to try to keep them uniformed so that it, it creates a pattern effect there. But all right, so I'm going to go ahead and stop the video, um, use this part one, and then I'll make a part two video.